Color me intrigued. Hello. Clint will not be joining us this evening as he's got some health stuff he's seeing too. So he's fine. He's just, you know, has a headache. So. I understand. We cause those. <laughs> yes. We can exacerbate them greatly. No. <laughs> that sounds decidedly like um like uh, a lot more than twenty two grand. Quite possibly, yes. Especially yeah, considering because I don't I even um like a Johnny on the truck company uh, with that amount of work would be looking at. I I would put conservative estimates above the thirty grand mark uh, for like, and that would be guys that I wouldn't rightly trust, and also they would likely not have a great warranty. Um, yeah. Yeah, roundabout. Maybe there's a guy out there that just likes doing work cheaply and by the skin of his teeth with regards to materials and things of that sort, but I don't know. Because, like, um. <laughs> you little, little job. I mean, some of that stuff could be done in a day, but some of that stuff. I mean, you No worries. I'm going to do my best to, uh, to muscle through with it. Well, we were talking earlier about how busy that could be on the campaign right now. And we don't even remember what just happened. Yep, we'll be doing a recap. Here, let me... <laughs> so it has nothing to do with the, uh, Yeah, no, I I was thinking, I was like, uh, we could just uh, re reschedule or something like that. But I was like, ah, even if it's, uh, you know, a shit, shit day for it, at least we're going to, like, otherwise, if we go further out, then you, people just completely forget what's going on. Uh, which, I mean, like, it sort of already happened. So uh, we'll uh, get back into things and do a recap and then... Uh, we'll uh, get back into where we're at. So that, that'll be good, and then next session we'll be a little bit more into it. Because I, I feel the same way. Um, I just took two COVID tests this last week, and both of them were negative, so... Uh, so I came back from MAGFest and um, oh, yeah. I actually, and it very well was likely my anxiety, but also I've got like, so I've got this hoodie that has like, it's completely lined with like a lot of fluff on the inside. And so it always overheats me, but I thought that I had night sweats one night. Um, and I think between anxiety and, you know, just being hot and all that other sort of stuff, I wasn't able to sleep very well that evening. And so I was like, oh God, this is one of the symptoms of Omicron, blah, 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 all this other sort of stuff. So, um, I waited a day and then I took a, a test and then I waited two more days and I took another test. So, but yeah, MAGFest, they also had tracking done and there was Omicron positive folks, uh, in the vicinity of some of the shows that we went to. So, because uh, MAGFest was pretty good about tracking, like, anyone that reported, they were like, okay, so what shows did you see? What panels were you at? Um, you know, that sort of stuff. So people would be, although they recommended that everyone get tested after the event, because, I mean, 
it was it was not as it was about half uh, the number of people that there were previously and everyone was pretty well distanced and also masking up and stuff like that but uh you know still a lot of people regardless of circumstance so so uh the, there's a couple things at the Gaylord. Katsukon is actually the anime one. Magfest is music and gaming. So what they do is they rent out the three main halls downstairs, uh, and they have a main floor for um, musical acts, and it's like, you know, big gaming musical acts like the Proto Man or Ninja Sex Party or anything like that. Um, and they constantly are playing music all throughout the weekend. Uh, in fact, uh, when there's not a musical act, they bring out a DJ, and so uh, usually the con doesn't shut down. It's usually 24 hours a day. Uh, this year, because of COVID protocols and also because of a shortage of staff, they would shut down between 4 a.m. and 8 a.m. every day. Um, but uh, in addition, one of the halls uh, is completely full of arcade machines. So they bring in pinball machines, like almost all of the arcade cabinets that you ever would have seen like when we were younger and stuff like that. Um, like the Simpsons arcade cabinet, the X-Men, you know, all that sort of stuff is there. Um, oh, oh the, no, uh, Street Fighter Mortal Kombat, they have quite a, quite a few. Same thing with Dance Dance Resolution. They have like a wall of those machines that, uh, that go off there. Um, but, uh, so that's a big draw there. Then they've got a, a room full of merchants with gamer, like they sell, you know, used video games, you know, like. Dice, hoodies, all that other kind of stuff. Uh, then upstairs, they have an area for uh, LAN gaming. Um, and they're pretty good with regards to the security on that if people bring like their machines and things of that sort. Um, they have two separate areas for tabletop gaming. They have a Pathfinder room and a D&D &D room. So Pathfinder Society and D&D &D Adventures League is run there. Um, and in addition to that, they do Magic the Gathering, they do tabletop, like, board games, like, fan tournaments and all that other sort of stuff. So, um, that's all available there as well. Um, then all of the random spaces throughout the con, they usually have DJs or, like, uh, musical acts, like, that come out with, you know, like, some, like, there's the Triforce Quartet, that is like, violins and violas and stuff like that. They had some folks that were singing a cappella and stuff like that. So it's, it's just, in general, uh, computer gaming, tabletop gaming, and music appreciation for, like, the nerddom and stuff like that, that, uh, and also cosplay in general. Um, they have a lot of cos, like, Mike, me, and uh, Cloud participated in the Pokemon cosplay thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, Mike, is that about the uh, right for uh, the pitch? <laughs> yes, he's not wrong. Okay, my, my priority list is different than your guys' priority list. Fair. I'll, I'll remind everyone that I'm live on Twitch right now. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, we and it's it's just something different for everybody, you know. Like our entire group, like Robbie did yoga for gamers. Like I don't know how he wakes up hungover and then goes and does yoga, but he's like that resets his day for him. Um, I just drink heavily and wander from hall to hall, uh, essentially. Oh God! Oh yeah, Cloud is Cloud and Jen are waking up, and I'm I'm taking hits off of a bottle of vodka. At like, to be fair, it was like two o'clock in the afternoon when we were waking up. Because like the thing is, is that we would stay up until I want to say five thirty in the morning, and then we would we would sleep until about noonish or one or two. Depending, and then I napped a bunch this year because, like, I was crapping out. Like, I was, I was getting exhausted. But there's at least two, three-hour naps in my whatever. Yeah. 
little bit. Mm. It's a great time. I mean, I'll tell you, the, the, I, mean, I absolutely love costuming. Mm. And the level of costume that some of the folks put on out there, I mean, it could be stuff as simple as just something covered in, you know, like a t shirt or even an outfit, like we are a character. But you also have people. You know, clearly took months worth of work to put together with LEDs and all kinds of stuff. That's the other, the other selling point, and we usually are able to get the Gaylord or Gaylord adjacent uh, hotel, is is that whereas Gen Con you have to usually walk like a ways to get to the convention center, um, everything's inside the Gaylord. So I, I did not leave all weekend, which is not a great idea because that means that I didn't hit restaurants very frequently. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the thing is, is that uh, you know overall, like the the entirety of the area of the National Harbor is beautiful. It's like a little like Pleasantville. The restaurants are amazing. Like everything, I highly recommend. And also, it's super close. Like you know, DC being like what two hours away or something like that. So, um, it's uh, the National Harbor's like at the like the line of Virginia, Maryland, and DC sort of. Am I right on that, Mike? So. Yeah, the the Potomac. If you look out one of the windows, you will see the Potomac. <laughs> I don't even know how many pools they have there, but the pool is, I would say, near Olympic size. The hot tub is like. Ten by twenty, or something along, along those lines, mm -hmm. and the water is like still smoking. <laughs> I try to get John to go uh, with me next year and join you guys. Yeah, that would be great, man. We'd love, we'd all the more the merrier and stuff like that. I w I just was talking to like Robbie and Ernie. Um, came over for a Pathfinder game the other day, uh, and uh, I, w I was saying to them, I apologize, I wish I had spent more time with you guys, but, you know, like, I wish I had spent more time with everybody. Um, but it was just a matter of everyone was off in every direction doing their own thing, and they, uh, they were like, you shouldn't apologize. Like, you know, we, we, got, we spent time together, like, especially the first night, I think, we spent a lot of time together, so... Oh yeah. When Jen was finally able to let her hair down for a while. No, abs absolutely. And then, uh, you know, in addition, um, we, you know, we saw Bit Brigade, which was great. Like the big shows that I want to see with Bit Brigade and Super Guitar Brothers, and we saw those. Uh, Gabe has gone off on a Super Guitar Brothers kick. Um, he is like he's like now he's on their Patreon and all the other sort of stuff. So. <laughs> stuff to make turkey clubs every day, so I only had to worry really about dinner each day, because the only meal I had to eat was a It was just great. Yeah. The vibe there is really, really cool. Everybody is, uh, yeah, man, it's super cool. nice, super nice people. I, very rarely do you run into assholes, and assholes are generally dealt with pretty, like, uh, there was apparently one guy that was going to hotel parties and being a, a creep to girls and stuff like that, but he's been banned for life, so... Um. But yeah, no, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it... So, Mike and I, uh, the thing is, is that when you get your badges, you get your badges ahead of hotel registration, and then after you get like a couple weeks to months afterwards, they open up a lottery that the night of you get a place in line randomly if you're logged in. And, uh, you know, it's between like one and 8,000 or something like that. And that allows you to book your hotels. And so what Mike and I have done the last couple of times is we just host a Google Hangout with everyone that wants to. This year we did it with Robbie. And um, 
we made sure that uh, Mike and I both had lower numbers, so we were able to both book the uh, the Gaylord. Uh, Mike booked uh, for Robbie, and I booked for myself and the Hanlins. So, um, you know, we we and if in the event we haven't gotten the Gaylord, we can usually we, Mike and I are persistent enough to bug the hotel like for a cancellation. So just imagine the two of us motivated to bother someone. It's just not a not good for them. So, but here, um, we'll get. We'll get started, and uh, as Jim, if if he joins us, uh, he joins us. But uh, that said, um, I just want to begin to do a little bit of a recap here. So, no worries. Um, so, uh, to start, we'll begin with the, the start of the, the campaign where you guys first came into Puerto del Sol. Um, you guys rode in on the boat of Julio Rodrigo. Um, him uh, being a uh, owner of uh, a fleet of ships, uh, and they're under the command of Admiral Edward Bingham. Uh, you uh, you came into the Sunkissed Isles here uh, as part of his return with the body of his brother Juan Rodrigo, who had died in the Grand Tournament in Pescana. So, um, in addition, he returned with his brother Fenibal Rodrigo, better known as Luduk the Crimson Highwayman. Uh, a, a legendary uh, masked thief uh, or highwayman that uh, is a scourge of the nobility. Um, but uh, in this instance, his brother had passed and he was coming back to the Isles to uh, pay his respects to, uh, to his family. Uh, you got to the port in the silk side docks, which are the nicer docks in the uh, sort of the n northwestern portion of the city. Um, and uh, Julio and uh, Luduk were confronted by their father, Mateo Rodrigo, uh, accusing them of being responsible for the death of their brother, etc., etc. You witnessed Luduk uh, be incredibly insulted. He broke out his mask, and then he began to sk skirmish with the guard and claimed that, you know, the Crimson Highwayman had returned. Uh, his father paid him off. Uh, as the Crimson Highwayman wants your money or your life, and he has a, a very stringent code regarding that. Uh, but uh, he left off, and his father said, if he ever sees him again, he's going to hang him. That aside, uh, your uh, guide, Gabriel Torres, who is a bard uh, that served under uh, Juan Rodrigo that you befriended on the voyage, uh, brought you to the King's Rest, which is a... Uh, um, an inn along the Silkside docks that's run by a couple from the Kingsland. Um, you did a favor for them, uh, cleaning out their basement uh, by um, by uh, you know going down and, and ridding it of a large number of rats. They had quite the infestation, um, and they offered to put you up uh, for the week. Um, fast forward a little bit. Uh, you know, you guys talked met, you know, uh, a few people in the bar, you uh, talked back and forth and role played a bit. Um, but your guide, Gabriel, said that he likely could find work and that he was going to ask his father, Antonio, or he's not his father, his uncle, my apologies, Antonio Torres, um, who is a, uh, a smith, a bladesmith of some great renown in the Isles, to see if he couldn't find some work for you. Uh, and actually, he could, uh, in that there was a dilemma that he ran into, uh, where uh, he had a matching set of daggers that he was making for Raul Rodrigo, one of the Rodrigo family, uh, and while he had sent them off to the jeweler, Alaric Goldhill, uh, the uh, blades were stolen as they were being returned to him from the jeweler. His courier had been shanghaied. And uh, while he was beaten pretty badly, he was not killed. But uh, whoever it was only made off with the blades. They left him his money and everything else that was on his person. Uh, after doing some uh, detective work throughout the stairs, which is the uh, richer portion of the city, um, you had uh, inquired around at a few different places. Uh, the... Um, the bar known as the Black Flagon uh, had uh, some information there for you. Also, a couple of, you know, like, look casing Alaric Goldhill's jeweler, jeweler store, uh, as well as uh, the alleyways around that area. Um, you got a good idea of how they did it. 
uh, and then you also got some eyewitness testimony that uh, there were individuals that were hanging around there that had a black rose uh, sort of uh, tattooed on them. Uh, and uh, you come to find out that uh, the uh, Thieves Guild uh, that's known as, let's see here, what is the name of them? La Rosa Negra, uh, in the common tongue, the Black Rose, is a Thieves Guild of assassins and uh, thieves that operates in the Sunkissed Isles. They tend towards gambling dens and brothels. And that sort of made you suspicious as Raul Rodrigo is a well-known owner of uh, brothels throughout the Sunkissed Isles. Um, it seems to be his actual, like, sort of trademark that he runs these sorts of things with the most famous of them in uh, Porta del Sol uh, being... Uh, I believe it's the Forbidden One Moment. I just want to make sure that I've got it right. It's in Old Town. Raul, Raul, Raul. The Forbidden Coast. So, uh, you went out to the brothel area, uh, and uh, the Forbidden Coast didn't open until after dark, so uh, you uh, went to a local watering hole, uh, that was also a whorehouse, but uh, not as uh, not as prolific as the Forbidden Coast. Um, you had a couple drinks. Uh, you met a few folks there. Um, but uh, going to the Forbidden Coast, you met with Carmen Orqueda, uh, also known as the Crimson Orchid. And uh, she seems to be not necessarily the right hand of Raul Rodrigo, but one of his uh, more trusted uh, operatives. Uh, she's a dancer of some renown at the Forbidden Coast. Um, you uh, managed to get an audience with Raoul, who was a man of few words, uh, but that said, uh, you had an audience with him, you explained the situation, uh, he said that he had some sort of inkling as to who it might be, and uh, Carmen uh, was a little bit more forthcoming with details after you left uh, Raul. Raul seemed to be under the impression that he could handle it himself. However, uh, Carmen uh, was willing to allow you to uh, get a, a bit more information, and she had uh, pointed to an individual that was uh, at the uh, at the Forbidden Coast, but at a table downstairs with his bodyguard, and the individual was a sickly uh, individual known as Adlat uh, Lockwin. Um, and uh, Adlat uh, is uh, someone that uh, Carmen sort of hinted at that he would be one that would want to uh, get at or embarrass Raul. Uh, she didn't really go into details, uh, per se. Uh, that said, when we ended, uh, you all are still at the Forbidden Coast, and you are all still talking to Carmen. So if you had more questions or needed more clarification or anything of that sort... Uh, we could certainly uh, get that for you. But that said, um, we can uh, pick up there uh, or uh, we can pick up like with you, you moving on with the investigation. Clint had hinted uh, that he wanted to, and unfortunately he's not here this evening, but Clint had hinted that uh, you guys would want to look into Adlat's residence and place of business. Um, now I'm going to, change uh, the uh, view to the Forbidden Coast um, just so that we get back to where we were at. And one moment. I'll make sure that we've got... So, uh, we're on the right side of the map. I know you have tokens on the right and the left side, but uh, on the right side of the map um, is the upstairs and uh, Carmen is at the balcony, uh, sort of, uh, she was talking and describing to you all, and if you look downwards on the, uh, the floor below, um, you can see Ciro, the bodyguard of Adlat, as well as Adlat down there. Um, but um, that's where we left off. Did anyone have any uh, questions or anything like that? Uh, you, you should have one on the map. Um,
No worries. Uh, yes, Arashi uh, lost a blade um, at one point. So, uh, but uh, that said, um, uh, Carmen, uh, it, who's uh, still addressing you all, um, so it is. Uh, Adlet would be the one that I would uh, inquire into. Again, uh, he uh, supplies weapons and and mercenaries uh, as a uh, sort of uh, how you say uh, his main business venture. But uh, he uh, he does other things as well. He is a dangerous individual, despite his appearance. Uh, he will probably be leaving soon. He tends to turn in earlier rather than later. I'm not so sure uh, if scouting his business at night is the best course of action, but I leave that up to you. Uh, he comes in a few nights a week, um, maybe uh, three, four, if he's uh, particularly invigorated, perhaps. But uh, he uh, he generally uh, will uh, come in uh, sometimes to meet with Raoul, sometimes to meet with me. Thank you. You're welcome. I hope that you all succeed in um, finding the missing blades. Uh, Raoul uh, was so much looking forward to them. He didn't seem uh, too troubled about the ones in uh, his initial reaction, or was that just his usual demeanor? I, I could wager that Raoul, if he so wished, uh, he could have them retrieved uh, himself. Uh, in fact, I imagine that uh, Raoul uh, may be plotting a means to... Um, again, Adlath and him have a complicated relationship, so um, Raoul would need to respond should uh, Adlath insult him in such a fashion. Of course, this is just conjecture. We have no proof at this point. But uh, should it be known that uh, he got one over on Raoul, uh, well, Raoul would most certainly uh, try to get one over on him. Is there anything else that I can do for you, gentlemen? If... Uh, I screen all of the talent here, so, um, oh my, well, as I said, uh, if you were looking to work as an escort, I most certainly can find you work with, uh, such a, uh, ample, uh, body of, uh, talent such as yourself, but, uh, um, with regards to dancing, uh, there is a very particular style here in the Sunkissed Isles, and uh, you uh, could uh, perhaps uh, take to it. I would need to uh, perhaps have you audition. Uh, uh, I would say that you also would need to provide uh, music, or at least uh, what music uh, you would need to our, uh, our band, but uh, I think that we could find use for you, yes. King's Rest? Yes, yes. And, uh, I, uh, I know about the band, so just let me know if I need anything else. <clears throat> now, um, should you take care of this uh, dagger business? Um, uh, there could be more work. Um, uh, not particularly because I'm looking to get the dagger, mind you, but uh, because uh, I think that uh, we'd have use for someone with those sort of skills. We're 
to say that they have a particular set of skills. Yes. I think it's quite clear what skills is interesting. We should go. Very well. Well, that being said, have a good evening, gentlemen. And uh, should you need me, I will be here. I can be fa found here most nights. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful when you say it in the common tongue. Right. Uh, with that, Carmen actually uh, goes back, and you see that she goes back to Raul's office. So. So, um, you guys uh, pretty much have, uh, you know, free reign to, to do as you, you wish from here. Um, it doesn't look like Adlat and Ciro, like, Adlat has a drink in front of him. Uh, Ciro has nothing in front of him. Uh, Ciro, of course, is wearing a metal mask uh, in, in front of his face. Uh, in addition to uh, some plates over some leather armor and such, he, you can see that he just sort of surveys the bar every now and again, uh, but uh, he doesn't appear to be imbibing or eating anything. Fair, fair. So what would you all like to do? All right. So, uh, if you head back to the King's Rest, I will zoom you guys over that direction. King's Rest. Like, what's your character's name? A rush. I wasn't asking in a negative way. <laughs> well, well, he gets us over that. Arashi, you said a cornfield about? Yes, a, a cornfield because it has ears. Ears of corn. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Clever as well. Wow. So. Camilla said you weren't the clever one. Uh. In the King's Rest, you have uh, the upstairs common room uh, that uh, all of all of you have access to off of the uh, the rooms. If you recall, you guys have uh, full you know clearance of the. Uh, and let me change the layer on that there, so that you're not beneath the thing. It's the map layer. There we go. Uh, but. Um, you have full clearance of the second floor of the King's Rest. However, uh, there is one room that's locked. And uh, you you were told that that was uh, the office of the innkeeper and that you weren't to uh, go in there. Uh, his name, of course, is, uh, if you recall, is Mr. Novit. So, my friends, uh, Gabriel says, as, as you're all sort of settling back in uh, to the uh, the King's Rest, um, what should be our next move? Yes. 
uh, Adlet uh, Lockwin. Sounds like something I'd want to throw away. Quite possibly. But uh, I believe that uh, Orkeda had given us uh, his uh, residence and place of business. Uh, he is also uh, over in uh, the uh, the area of Old Town, but he is a bit to the north of the uh, the brothels and the gambling dens. Sure of coins. Well, you find the daggers, you will be a thousand coins richer. was uh, one of the deities that was revered outside of several of the deities of the sea in the wind. Um, Asmodeus is known for uh, power and uh, uh, amongst his other uh, more charming aspects and so he appealed to many uh, individuals that uh, served under the pirate king. So, but uh, most of the temples have been scuttled or destroyed, um, taken possession of by the Kingsland and the Margrave. You are correct. Um, again, putting uh, too much stock in all of that and paying a tithe, he spits on the ground. <laughs> that is for the birds. A cult of Asmodeus? Are we are we going to go hunting for for devil worshippers? I... I think on it a bit more. Um, I do recall. Let's see what I recall. This is old. Not a bad thing. Nothing with a nine. Uh, but uh, Gabriel will say it would tend to be amongst those that either want to consolidate or continue to hold power, um, and. In addition, uh, most folks amongst the Sunkist Isles, if you were to uh, have that sort of skeleton in your closet, none of us would care, um, perhaps. Um, might avoid them or, you know, keep an eye on them. But uh, that aside, uh, the only ones that would be truly interested in stamping out devil worship uh, would be the Margrave and uh, his ilk from the Kingsland. It's at least our current lead on these daggers that uh, we found with uh, retrieving. Certainly. So, um, I mean, we can try to follow some of these leads about town. 
Um, you can ask around at various different places, but uh, uh, again, your guess is as good as mine with the evidence that we have in front of us as to which portion or area that we should go or whom we should speak with. I will try to guide you as best I can. What is it that you would like to do? Very well. Uh, would you like to do it this evening, or shall we do it tomorrow during the day? Uh, yes. Uh, the Crimson Orchid gave uh, some instructions as to where he's located. Uh, he is located right around a... Uh, a I believe it's a uh, inn. Uh, it's not only a tavern, but it, they do have rooms adjacent. Um, and there is um, a, uh, a particular uh, monument or garden nearby as well that I'm aware of. Uh, but uh, the inn that is uh, almost adjacent, uh, the next street over, is La Espina de la Rosa. Very good. Well, why do we not get a good night's rest and then we head over uh, in the morning? Um, I will lead you there and we shall see what we can learn. Sounds fine to me. All right. Anything else anyone wants to do that evening? Are we talking about dancing or escorting? I'm just curious. Okay. A bit of the same. Yes. All right, whatever. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Uh, I'm
whatever point we make, we can split it. Sounds quite fair, my friend. Oh, very fair, Dad. By the way, if, you, if you'd if you like to make money uh, with your various different skills, if you wanted to spend a day uh, just downtime uh, plying your wares and such, uh, and usually it takes a couple days to really get some groundswell as far as making any uh, appreciable coin, but the rules for that are around about crafting uh, in the player's handbook. Uh, essentially, um, you're able to uh, almost utilize any skill to make money depending on circumstance. So, um, I just uh, eye that over if you have any interest in uh, attempting to make money. You might be able to get like a few tips here and there with particularly powerful performances, but overall the best way to make money would be doing that. All right, cool deal. Well, and that's just something that you can uh, sort of learn over time. Uh, but um, the night passes by uneventfully, uh, and I'll pull us back to uh, the main map before pulling us over to Lockwin's business. So let me make sure that I, there we go. So. I'm going to move Adlat to roughly where his business is on the map. I'm trying to move the NPCs to roughly where their businesses are. So he's a little bit north and to the west of where uh, Raul, uh, Carmen, and their ilk uh, ply their wares, uh, but to the north as well in Old Town. Um, as you guys are uh, moving across uh, the city. Uh, and again, remember that you are located over at the Silkside Docks, so you're working your way like virtually all the way across Porta del Sol. Um, you make your way across the Silk Bridge uh, that goes over uh, into Old Town and towards the Stoneside Docks. Um, and you go through th that massive marketplace again. But as you're about to get to the marketplace, um, you guys can see a large number of uh, guards are out. Uh, and there is a uh, carriage uh, that has... Uh, the carriage looks extremely nice. There's like gold filigree uh, carved into the wood of it. Uh, it's rather innate. It even has a uh, stylized emblem on the side of it. Uh, and there is a man. Uh, he appears uh, to, uh, to be of Kingsland descent um, that is outside the carriage. Uh, he has, you know, several guards as well as um, a, uh, a uh, teamster that is uh, the one that's driving his, his carriage. Uh, but several of the guards... Uh, look like they are injured. Um, they're, you know, looks like that they were bleeding on their tabards and they're, they've been patched up and things of that sort. Uh, and it looks like several uh, of uh, the um, the Margrave's men, uh, guards that serve the fortress, are here. Uh, and it looks almost like a crime scene of some sort uh, as uh, the guards seem to be taking down uh, this nobleman's uh, statement, uh, talking to him about what has transpired. He will literally get about three feet away before he's scruffed. <laughs> Start to kind of walk against, kind of holding it, kind of like this old cartoon. I'm just being dragged against the ground. Do you wish to go speak with them to find out what has transpired? No, I wanted to go speak with them because they're injured. They don't want to kill the people. That hurts. Well, Do you want to go speak with them? That would buy a certainly some good faith and uh, mayhaps they are in. Of, uh, assistance. 
Oh, yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking about doing. Oh, but so, yeah, those would be perfect. All go together. That's for sure. All right. I'll, right I'll, let go. I'll let go of the straw. You guys all head over. And um, you, the, the nobleman uh, himself seems to be fumingly angry and is dressing down uh, the Margrave's men. Uh, as you approach, he's, you know... Uh, he looks like he's of Kingland descent at a glance. Um, it would generally be a check to know more than that, but having been from the Kingsland, you you know looking at him. He's he's definitively not from the Isles. He looks like he's of Kingsland descent. Um, but uh, he's dressing them down and saying, if you cannot keep your street safe here, what good is the Margrave doing in this city? This town is a cesspool. I can't believe that you allow things of this happening. Look at this. This is a main street in daylight. And the, uh, he's just completely redressing uh, the, uh, and the, the Margrave's men are taking it from him, by the way. Uh, he looks at you incredulously for a moment, um, and then uh, he looks back at the guard, he looks at you, then he goes back to redressing the guard. He says, and another thing, just how, how secure is this site? Who the hell is this? And why is he allowed even within 30 feet of me? As he, you know, just continues. <laughs> um, as he, as he says, he turns to you, says, "Urchin, away with you now." He looks you. Just to change the tune, uh, you know, of this guy's general anger. Okay. Um, as I start to uh, walk up. Oh no, they're def like he's within fifteen feet of his carriage, so the the men are like leaning up against it. One of them is sitting, like sort of holding himself. Um. Uh, so, a uh, few things happen in that time period. Arashi, what was your perception check for? And Mike, I think you're on mute. He is leaving and coming back in, it appears. Um, yes, I can hear you now. Okay, so uh, you are at the edge of the of the town, uh, and so uh, at this point, um, I mean not the edge of the town. You're at the edge of the marketplace, is what I meant to say. And so the marketplace is vast, and there's tons of people. So this has gotten a quite a little bit of an audience at a distance per se, um, and you do notice uh, that you know. A lot of people have taken interest in this. Uh, one of the things that you do slyly notice, I will whisper to you. Uh, 
and you only notice it because you had a critical success. Uh, I'll get to, back to that in a moment. I'm working on that. I haven't succeeded yet, but I, I haven't failed exactly. Uh, no, you, you had a, a circumstance bonus, uh, given that you were playing music from the Kingsland uh, for these folks. So you didn't actually, f you, you, you achieve a success with a 13 because of a circumstance bonus. But, um, but it was actually worth me spending the <laughs> Um, but, uh, and, and with the, the music, uh, and with the healing energy, he does seem to calm visibly. Uh, you do manage to heal. Most of the guards had been patched up a little bit. They still had some injuries left. And so with like that blast of healing energy, uh, that you do, um, and you were doing it to just one individual, right? Now the the all three the all three actions will not have the bonus associated with it. So you will only do a D8 uh, if you do all three actions, which which you still rolled a maximum for. Oh my legs, I thought they stacked. N nope. So the, the two action one is your super heal. Uh, the three action one is boom, you're doing a burst. Uh, but um, that said, you do. It looks like you t top off everyone else, and they are. Um, as some of the guards come over and say, thank, thank you, actually. I, I appreciate that. Um, uh, again, it's also good to see uh, you're wearing clear symbols of the cob, or you were you invoked. And at least one of the mainland gods is, is represented here in, in this uh, God's forsaken place. Um, as Mantova, actually, uh, he makes a note of the music as he's redressing the guards. You can see that he sort of looks over um, and like sort of a half smile comes to his face as he says, but, um, I suppose these things do happen every once in a while. No, no, no. That was a good question. He has his personal guard, which were the injured ones and such. And they, they, they are wearing completely separate livery. Uh, in fact, it's the, the only way that you would know that they're associated with the Kingsland is, is that he himself is, and his uh, sigil that's on the carriage has some light imagery that would evoke the Kingsland um, as be more of a society thing. But beyond that, to the side, um, that said, uh, the guards that he were redressing were clearly guards that are here from the fortress of the Margrave. So he's he's yelling at, at the, them for uh, some sort of slight that occurred uh, against his men. I'll, 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 butt, I'll butt in. Mm -hmm. if you don't mind. No, no, absolutely. So you are so right to, to be so worried and so upset about men being wounded. I mean, clearly this, the, the, the lives of your men were far more important to you than even your own. And the fact that they were accosted so could be, you know, so rude and so difficult. But I, I'm sure that, you know, the Margrave's men will, will redouble their efforts to, you know, protect the lives of the, the good citizens here. Uh, but do you mind if uh, we could get a, a, a word in with your men or that your men could uh, give a bit of a recounting of uh, what has happened here? Oh, I could recount uh, just as easily as any of them. I was assaulted by the Crimson High Women. Tell. Well, we were coming down this street here, uh, out of the marketplace, and I was headed to the stairs, and before we could get to the Silk Bridge, uh, this dastardly villain dashes down off the rooftop, comes straight in the middle of daylight, in the middle of the road, and threatens my men, uh, saying something about uh, the immortal uh, uh, something or other, my money or my life, uh, my guards try to defend me, and uh, rather than uh, 
then have him kill my guards, which he injured several of them in the fighting, I gave him my coin pouch. That is very noble of you to, to again, you know, express such love and loyalty for a company, uh, for king, you know, and for your own, your own men to, 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 to risk your well-being and, and uh, success for them. That, that is a quite a noble of you. Yeah. My uh, diplomacy is actually not for him, but for his guards. Uh, and that's and you've had a minute, and you, are, you so you've been able to give an impression, and uh, you think that you know you've gotten a positive uh, you know impression upon not only the guards but him as well. Like ev like in general, most of the people now the the thing here in is is that uh, you there's other people watching. And that diplomacy, you are aware that, you know, you're sucking up slightly to the Kingsland in front of a crowd of uh, people. No, no, I, I so, yeah, yeah, so that, 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 very good. So that, but you, you do think that you're, you're putting in a, a very, as like, you can see some smiles coming your way and uh, Mantova, um, uh, or sorry, the, uh, the nobleman says to you, um, well, uh, I appreciate um, all of your concern, and it's uh, with your accent. I can't uh, help but think that you're from the mainland as well, as well as your. Um, who is that Third young? Third Corps, where I served. Oh, a oh, military man! How excellent! Oh my goodness! Well, um, here, um, where are you staying? The king's rest. <laughs> oh, here. Um, I will have to have a message sent to you. I loved what you had to play there for a moment. I would love to hear you play at my residence in the stairs. It would be excellent uh, to have you perform at dinner sometime. That would be amazing. Perfect. I, I, by the way, I had not introduced myself. Uh, my name is Lord Vincenzo Mantova. He holds out his hand, but it's like sort of like a limp hand, as if to be kissed. I don't, yeah. He's got a large ring on that hand, by the way. Uh, he's he's looking for you to kiss the ring. He looks very pleased. Yes, you guys don't need to roll. Uh, <laughs> you guys don't need to roll roll any sort of perception or anything like that to realize what's going on with the crowd. As you see, several people spitting on the ground and stomping away, or other things of that sort. Like a, a nobleman from the Kingsland being upset and throwing a tantrum, absolutely crowd pleasing. But this whole uh, scene that's going on right now, not exactly pleasing to the crowd. It's some like it looks like the crowd is beginning to disperse as Mantova is no longer throwing a fit, and the Margraves men look like they're taking the rest of the uh, the description of everything that happened from uh, Mantova's men. And uh, they're, you know, going through all of the steps of making sure that they, they do their due diligence. But um, you get some uh, mutterings from the Margraves men to Mantova that uh, we'll, we'll ensure that the Margraves top men are on top of this and, and we will hunt the outlaw down. Uh, that said, uh, Mantova turns to you and says, uh, uh, now this has unfortunately made me late for a, uh, a luncheon, um, so I do need to be going. But uh, it was a pleasure meeting you, and uh, I will have a messenger sent to the King's Rest. I'm aware of the place. It's run by a lovely little couple. But the, the only thing I would beg of you is that uh, if at some point we can get a recounting from your men to understand what happened, um, it would be of interest to us, and I'm sure it would help seek justice for the injustice that was done to you. Uh, well, here, I will send them to the rest for a drink uh, later on this evening, um, once they've uh, been relieved of their duties. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Um, as, he, uh, as he's walking on to uh, his uh, carriage, uh, he stops uh, at uh, Virgil, uh, looks down at him quizzically, but then pats him on the head and says, uh, Good lad. Uh, 
doesn't care for you having to do it. He looks quizzically. <laughs> he looks quizzically at you for a moment, just cocks his head, and then goes back into his carriage. I, I start walking over to Kel, big old grin on my face. You know, I did, I did a lot of good work today, a lot of good religion work today. Virtually, you did quite well, but I need a stiff drink to wipe this taste out of my mouth. Oh yeah, I saw you kiss the ring. That's that's he did, definitely does not wash his hands. That's a, that's a taste that bothers me. No, oh, well. Um, do I do I see that there's some reports of this going on and, and catching the enemy uh, an eye on the individual I did? It doesn't look like I could. Well, yeah, I I wanted to get in earshot of that individual to say something. Sure. Uh, okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I, I would have uh, been looking away so that it doesn't look like I was being in communication. There are those that can be called upon for assistance uh, in future endeavors. Just, uh, just not by looking just. And then I'll, I'll just. I'll pause for just a moment, but. And, and that was whispered so that it was only going to be audible, audible to just him. And you're my stealth at that point. Uh, sure. An odd merchant that's like standing by goes, Who the hell are you talking to, man? <laughs> well, we love to engage ourselves in conversation, don't you? No? Like, I don't know if you could throw a little bit of uh, Mr. Subliminal into your character, but that would be fucking amazing. I'm, 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 I love your character. Yeah, so I, I work my way back over to the uh, the group and uh, uh, good show healing up those guards the way you did, Virgil. Well, way to go. Thank you. All right. Um, that said, Gabriel, um, if if you're all uh, done with the uh, the scene as the carriage takes away. Uh, Gabriel says, uh, well, let's uh, keep going, folks. Um, we've still got more ground to cover before we get over uh, to the thick of Old Town. Um, so, uh, as uh, he leads you down, he's actually leading you slightly south of your destination. He says it's probably best um, to be surreptitious that we come in from the south just because if we come in immediately uh, from the west will be just almost tripping over his place of business. So i um, going to move the map. So first he goes east and then north on the map. And hopefully, let's see here. You guys should have vision. It's a very large map, um, but uh, towards the uh, south, um, of that map, there should be your tokens, and you should have visibility. Yes. Uh, the good thing about... Indeed. Uh, so, uh, Gabriel will lead you uh, through here. Um, one thing to note uh, is that, again, uh, most of the houses are made of either stone or some sort of masonry uh, material, like uh, plaster or uh, adobe or something to that effect. Um, there are some wooden based houses uh, across the uh, from like rooftop to rooftop here. You do see some like uh, flimsy like rope ladder type things going from rooftop to rooftop. That's a little bit confusing. Uh, but other than that, uh, ahead is just like a small marketplace as well as what looks to be like a stone memorial uh, directly to the north. And Gabriel is leading you. Uh, down sort of a uh, side street to the uh, the left over here. Um, 
he says, uh, you're going to want the full lay of the land uh, should we uh, need to do anything regarding retrieving s some of these goods. Yes. Oh, hey, Bill. Or, no, Bill. Jim. Jesus. Uh, you're casing uh, the business of uh, Adlat Lockwin, who may have stolen the daggers. You are. Sure, absolutely. Um, I probably would be lore cartography, but one moment, let me. Uh, I'll check the book as well, because uh, again, if you have like the artist background, there's uh, some items in there. There's also it's probably a craft skill now that I think about it, because there's various different types of craft and uh, craft cartography seems about right because you could make money at it. If you're particularly good at it, uh, you could make an untrained check uh, with uh, crafting. I imagine if you so chose, but uh, again, it's, it's going to be like the, the difference between someone that's an actual map maker and like me with like crayons. Mm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it's serviceable. It's uh, you know, it, it would be something that's again like you're you're taking some time to to do it and. But uh, Gabriel goes off into, and these streets are a little bit windy in Old Town, so he goes off in this direction here. Okay. Uh, uh, cer certain skills could be brought into play there. Typically, again, that would be a, a very specific sort of lore uh, with regards to casing, but also thievery or similar abilities um, could be utilized. Uh, again, it's it's sort of a wisdom or intelligence type thing in order to be able to do things of that sort, but there is a natural slyness and cunning that comes with someone that's a particularly good thief, so again, um, you, you know, try, try to aim towards uh, lures and such for that sort of thing, but at the same point in time, uh, you know, you could use thievery uh, to, uh, to try to, uh, you know, figure it out. Just again, thievery is based off of decks, and so it's sort of This place is like an ambush zone. You could get, you could get got by any number of different ways. This is absolutely, you're like on your guard. Um, true. And you guys have two because uh, most of you have built them up. Yep, I saw it. No, no, no. So, as you're approaching this area, you do note that it's unique uh, in that uh, this large stone building uh, to the left of Gabriel looks like it's almost, uh, it's one of the taller buildings in uh, the old city, uh, and it looks almost like the remnants of a fortress or something to that effect. Uh, you can see uh, that there's... Um, 
the tapestries and tabards uh, and flags flying off of it uh, that indicate that the building's dedicated to the Margrave. Um, and, uh, you know, you see uh, moving about the area um, soldiers and laborers uh, that are, you know, would indicate that this is almost like uh, away from the fortress, this is sort of a barracks in the, uh, the actual uh, of old city. Um, and then that would be a great place to oversee uh, some of the rest of the district. Uh, but um, in particular, what draws your eye are these little rope bridges that go from rooftop to rooftop. Um, that that seems like that would be something that that the normal citizenry are not to you know that's not something that they do unless they're hanging clothes off it or something like that so uh, something goes off in your mind with regards to that but um, you can't quite put your finger on it you haven't really seen it before so No, none of none of them uh, appear to be here. Um, but uh, Gabriel continues, and he winds up. You can see that he goes up this path that goes up past the fortress. As he says, if we go north, uh, we'll be coming across uh, the business and the inn uh, in short order. Um, as he leads you past, like some a laborer that's loading up boxes into the building and a soldier that's standing guard. Absolutely. Those merchants, uh, the one on the right seems to have uh, potuses, powders, uh, potions, and uh, florals uh, in general. Um, and the one on the left appears to be dealing in uh, trinkets, knickknacks, and other uh, cheap and debased jewelry. Uh, so uh, grabbing and grappling is usually based off of acrobatics versus athletics or similar. Um, so it'd be like a dexterity base um, versus that sort of thing uh, in order to escape his his grab. Um, Uh, what's the role to notice? Uh, it's perception, every time. I could be stealth versus perception, because again, I mean, like again, you're you're trying to surreptitious, or maybe you're not trying to surreptitiously do it, but at the same point in time, you may you know, unconsciously be getting good at slipping away, so. No worries. Uh, oh my gosh. So, uh, yeah, this, I'm up and out, I'm going to head up this way. Just begin a small conversation with this merchant about their wares and where they get them and all sorts of, you know, uh, academic questions. And then, however long you want. I mean, even if it's like when they get around to this alley, if you want to give to share another, like, uh, like when they get to here. Mm. Another chance. I'm down for that too. Okay. 
uh, he, you know, he, the Castellano merchant, uh, goes, my young friend, uh, what is it that you're looking for? I have any number of cure-alls. I have any m number of, of poutuses. If you're looking for something, I've got it here in my uh, stall. Uh, he's a rather jovial, large, uh, sort of Castellano, so um, he's more than happy to speak about his uh, various different wares. Um, otherwise, is uh, was Co just following along with the rest? Yes. And uh, about at this point, uh, where I'm moving your miniature, um, there's a bunch of boxes and crates in the way over here, but you still have line of sight to where uh, Virgil is uh, sort of going. Um, so uh, you can get an you can get another perception check at that point. I clicked the button like three times. Uh, that's good enough to notice Virgil. I mean, he's pretty loud and uh, doing that, so... Yes. I don't know. Castellanos, or odd, whatever. Uh, they they go about whatever they do in in, in their sections. Um, I, I'm uh, from further down south. Uh, I, I stay in the south ward. I try not to get into anything around these parts. Yeah, occasionally. No problem. Okay. Um, he's got, uh, you know, any number of things uh, from the uh, the alchemy section. So whatever you're looking to to buy, like low gold value, he has, um, like you know, various different potions and materials to make potions and uh, things of that sort. There's a lot of low gold uh, costing potions that are around uh, in this edition. So. Um, you know, he's got several, you know, cure potions, you know, he's got uh, ones that, uh, you know, help make people stronger or stealthier or anything of that sort, you know, so you can... No problem. Um, so, uh, that's... Um, he, uh, he saw you. And, uh, Mr. Kane, uh, if you could check, um, G-Chat. Oh, cool. Awesome. Yeah, just uh, click through to it. Uh, I'll check it out later. Um, but uh, that said, uh, so Gabriel leads you guys out of this alleyway next to this like fortress-like building. Um, and uh, as you guys sort of begin to collect about here, or uh, some of you do at least, um, he begins to uh, point... Uh, well, he turns his back to the area, but he points to this area over here, and then he points to this area over here. So I don't know if you can see where I'm pinging, but that area he points to first, and this area second. Uh, um, you may need to move your tokens up. Um, 
Okay, uh, here, let me uh, do that. Let me get over there and I will move your token up. Let's see here, we've got his grail, so we'll move him up there and up through the alleyway and up to here. Um, so, uh, where are we at? All right, so uh, Gabriel uh, points to this building and then this building. And he, he whispers, the building on the left is the one that the Crimson Orchid gave us uh, the location as to the place of bid business for Adlat. The building on the right here um, is the inn that I spoke of. Uh, the inn uh, being La Espina de la Rosa. Um, that uh, is not the entrance there. Uh, the entrance is actually, you have to go down the alley to our right and uh, loop around to the entrance of the building. Uh, but as you can see, um, and you can see very clearly, uh, on top of the building to the left there, as well as on the ground, are uh, men in black cloaks uh, wearing uh, metal masks similar to what Ciro was wearing. Uh, and uh, they, you know, seem to be guarding uh, the alleyways and the entryways uh, to this uh, building, uh, which it seems to be a place of business, by the way. Uh, there's no signs uh, of, uh, of um, many people going in and out, and there's also no signs that, like, denote that this is a place of business, but... Um, you can see once in a while uh, planes close people, you know, walking out uh, here and there and such. Um, but there are guards about and there are dogs. Uh, if you move around, uh, you'll be able to get like a little bit of a better lay of the, uh, the land. Just keep in mind that the guards, you can't really tell what they're doing. They've got masks on, so they look like they're standing vigilantly. Uh, some of them, if they're near each other, may be having conversations that you can you can hear. Uh, but that said, so the, if you're looking to go to the inn, it's down the road to the right here. If you're looking for the business that Adlat owns, it's this one right here. So um, that said, I'll let you guys take over as Gabriel uh, says, uh, I'm going to uh, take a back seat to whatever you all want to do just because I do not want to draw attention to you all. No. Uh, the, the only uh, clear sign that there's actual any sort of business being conducted is you can occasionally see laborers or scribes going in and out of it, um, and the guards not stopping them. Uh, but uh, there are guards about, so. What's the, uh, what's the climate like? Florida-ish, uh, probably a little bit hotter, um, just because we're, we're looking at uh, actually, uh, probably more like Georgia, I should think, um, just because I think it's a little bit north of Pescana, um, still along the coast off a bit. So, uh, you know, pretty, pretty warm. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Gabriel, uh, you know, sort of pulls off to the side and is is strumming a. It's not unusual for bards to be about and begin playing uh, in the street, as you've seen. So Gabriel just begins to strum and uh, pick at his lute. All right. Stands up straighter. Uh, he's got his sword slung over his back. 
uh, difficult to say what his expression is again because he's got that steel mask over his face um, but uh, he s sort of stands more to attention as you approach afternoon you hear sort of hollowly echo from inside of his mask well you know we have to do what we have to do. I think we all uh, sweat wearing something like this. I'm no different. I'm just paid well to do it. This is the back of it. You want to go around to the front. The innkeeper will let you in. Welcome. All right. Right. So Gabriel will lead you around to the inn, and if you can see in some place, that's either because there's windows or openings there. So. No problem. So as you guys are uh, led around here, um, Gabriel walks. Cool deal. Uh, Gabriel walks into the inn, and the innkeeper goes um, looking for a room. As uh, Gabriel goes, uh, no, no, just the bar, please. Th thank you, though. Um, as uh, he opens up the door and help yourself. And so he leads you into uh, the uh, the bar. And you can see that there is a, a set of stairs that go upwards. But um, Gabriel uh, sort of ponies up to the bar. And uh, it looks like um, there is an odd mix of uh, sailors, mercenaries, and uh, the guard that are here, some of them are wearing their masks. Uh, some of them are not wearing their masks. It looks like some of them are just the same as like some of the guys that would have been outside uh, by that business. Uh, but um, they, they are here uh, either eating and drinking. Uh, there is a stage with a troubadour uh, playing uh, very light background music. Um, as usual, you can see in the corner, the captain's chair is there, along with the navigator's equipment. Um, but Gabriel goes up to the bar and just orders a, uh, a drink um, as he comes in. <laughs> so, um, you ask the innkeeper that? And um, uh, you go ahead and move yourself to where you're at, by the way, because the bar. Oh, you asked the innkeeper, not the bartender. Ha ha. OK. Um, the innkeeper looks nervously at the uh, the guard across uh, from the two of you, um, which I'll move the camera to sh Gabriel is the camera, unfortunately. So I'll move him over here so that they can see the conversation. Uh, so. 
the innkeeper looks nervously at the guard across from you and, and looks back at you and says, No, no, uh, this area of town's safe as houses. The Margrave's men have a barracks right around the corner. Why, why would there be anything amiss with regards to this particular neighborhood? It's one of the, the um, pillars of the old city. Uh, these aren't the Margraves, men. Uh, they're some of our bouncers and guards. But mo uh, you'd have to speak to Ciro about that. Um, he runs uh, Adlat's uh, security. Um, Um, you say that, and the guard across from you said, what did you just say? Oh, uh, sorry, friend, uh, I didn't mean to offend you, I just, you know, uh, where I'm from, you know, guards, mercenaries, you know, bouncers, they're big, like me. Well, we don't need to be big to threaten you. I don't know. Uh, yes, you do. But, uh... He, he says rather loudly, I don't know. Are you, uh, sort of infringing upon me and all of, uh, Ciro's men? As you guys can all hear chairs in the, uh, the bar, just all of them begin to squeak back as every single member of the guard and every mercenary in that room begin to stand up. I'm not your pal, buddy. The, the man puts his, his hand on his blade and says, I've got nothing going on at home, and soon you're going to have no home to go to, friend, as he begins to draw his longsword. Uh, as the, the innkeeper goes, uh, oh, okay, all right, as he, he runs, uh, and you, you guys see the innkeeper run and then barrel over the, uh, the um uh bar there um is there a chair within reach of me that i can uh, sit on uh again you can see what's in the room so mm -hmm. yeah i'll be looking like i'm sitting on the chair all right said something to upset the guard uh, and uh, appears as though maybe some of his compatriots from the room will be heading out there shortly. Should be quite a show. Um, so, uh, back back in the room with Kane, uh, the guard that you're sort of like staring down uh, yells into the other room, Boys! Let's teach this big bastard a lesson! As I need everyone to roll for initiative. Uh, it depends. Uh, I would say that you guys are probably a couple blocks uh, down. So um, you guys, round about here, um, you know that the entrance to the inn is up and then over. And uh, that, that said, you guys do hear him yell that. Um, and... Uh, you know, you will be able to roll for initiative as well. I was going to say, like, I, I don't, we don't see, he doesn't yell Kane. We just hear, like, the big bat to the left. Or something goes, like, I would hate to be that guy. You mean, what, 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 what do you mean? Big guy. Well, 
I mean, if it sounds like the big guy's gonna have like a bunch of guys in their corner, it sounds terrible. Terrible. I, I was hoping to have the hell to actually throw the chair in the door when I'm starting rushing, but I'm not gonna do it. Alright, I'm gonna have to. I didn't clear out the turn order beforehand, so I'm gonna do some cleaning up now. Alright, so, alright. Yep, and Arashi's at a 13, that's good. Virgil's at a 15, as he should be. Co's at that. That old Virgil initiative I need to remove. There's old Virgil. It's me. I'm just as insufferable as I used to be. I think I still need initiative on... Oh, no, Grail, uh... No, Grail hasn't rolled yet. No problem. Uh, if you want, we can roll it for you. And one moment, I need to step away to grab a book real quick.
so uh, the the order is uh, taken care of there. Uh, the um, top of the order is Grail. They were ready for people to start shitting their bar. What can I say? So, um, that said, uh, we start with Grail, who uh, you hear all this happening. Uh, you see people drawing weapons in the room and uh, getting ready to go in the other room to join uh, their comrade who had called them in there. Sure. No problem. You were there. Ordinarily, diplom ordinarily diplomacy would would be very difficult to use without a feat in combat. That being said, combat has not begun yet because you were the f first to act. So you can go ahead and roll diplomacy to see if that diffuses the situation any. Oh yeah, no, no, absolutely. They have to either tumble through or get through you in some capacity. With a natural 20, which is a critical success, the guard that's in front of, of Kane, you manage to, to stave off the combat for now, says... Mm. Because you had a critical success, and, and again, it was very unlikely you'd be able to defuse the situation, but you had a critical success on your hands. So that, the, the but that being said, oftentimes, uh, you know, if you look through the diplomacy rules, you can uh, try to ask for a favor or ask for something, like ask them to do something that's outside of their nature or something of that sort. Um, and the guard says, maybe if you buy a round for us, we can forgive this slight. And maybe your thick-headed friend here can go and sit down and maybe stop running his mouth. That's more than enough. They'll be drinking for a while. <laughs> when you toss your pouch over there, by the way, the innkeeper that took uh, cover underneath the bar, his one hand shoots up and grabs the pouch. <laughs> And the innkeeper counts it and says, That should be fine. Is it okay for me to come out now? <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the guard uh, in front of Kane steps back and says, I'll take my drink after my shift is over. You bet I will. As he gets back behind the uh, the desk at the end. All right. Virgil walks in, looks around, and goes, "Which one of you punk ass motherfuckers wants to throw down?" <laughs>
You guys get get up to the the door in time to to see uh, everything sort of uh, begin to calm down. Uh, Gabriel's not there, of course. Gabriel's inside the uh, the bar. So. <laughs> uh, you can see uh, where everything is available inside of the, the in there there's actually uh, one guard that looks like he is uh, from uh, House uh, House um, Rodrigo. Uh, other than that, there's a couple sailors. Uh, there's a well-dressed Kenku in the corner. And th then the rest of the bar looks like it's made up of uh, guards and mercenaries that are of the same ilk as uh, the guy at, that was at the, um, uh, the uh, door. So, um, <laughs> okay. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, the, the, the dynamic lighting, especially on, on this map setup, is really nice. Um, uh, Arashi with a 21. Um, you, su you succeeded, and I, I want to give you something for the success, but at the same point in time, everyone at the bar seems on high alert right now <laughs> just because of what happened. So, like, the one random guard that's over here just having a meal, uh, he's looking around, like, trying to get a, a feed on the situation. The bard that's even playing on the stage, that's just sort of playing background music, like he's just strumming and and doing a light tune. He looks sort of nervous. Um, you know, there's there's a kenku and a sailor off to the side, and actually, it looks like it's the same kenku that was at the the king's rest the other evening. Um, but uh, he looks nervous. There's a guy that looks like spindly, like bookish, that's at the table with the mercenaries, and he looks like uh, he's like trying. He, he's looked like he's he was reading through a book and he was scribing something over. But um, he he looks like he's shaking a little bit after all of that. So, uh, uh, it looks like he's got a couple ledgers in front of him. Sure. Absolutely. Perception. Oh, you know, like, you're like an accountant that sees Excel spreadsheets in front of you. These look like that. These are these are looks like they're ledgers uh, that he's just you know taken some of his work from the office and come back, and it looks like he's just balancing books. I mean, he's just going back and forth, and it looks like general accounting for a business. Fair. What did the rest of you? Uh, 
No, uh, the bartender uh, brings drinks around to everyone. So there's not a bar wench, but uh, there's a big, gruff and burly uh, bartender. And by the way, he looks like he's like extremely friendly with the guards and the mercenaries when he comes by. Like he's patting them on the back, and you know, just he's joking with them, uh, bringing over. He brings over a tray of drinks to them, you know, on Grail, uh, and then he you know, comes over and brings, uh, Grail ordered his drink, and if Cain, if you order a drink, he'll bring you one as well. Uh, but he seems to be the only person that's, uh, tending the area. Um, so. Uh, when he comes by the job, he brings his drink. Oh, okay. Um. Hey, uh, well, it was almost the last thing you did, buddy. I don't know if you know about where you're at, uh, my friend, but, uh, uh, you know, again, think about it before you uh, start insulting someone around these parts, just because uh, you could be insulting someone that's connected. I don't know. <laughs> Black flower guys. Yeah, yeah. A lot of those guys rolling around these parts. The black flower guys. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> hey, you're funny. Hey, you're pretty funny too, but I can't tell if it's like funny ha or a smell. Sure. Society would work. Uh, any number of skills would work. 19. Uh, so uh, these look like uh, they're mercenaries uh, and uh, well-trained ones at that. Uh, given what they're wearing and uh, the, the look and style of, of some of their things, you've seen similar for mercenaries that have worked for the Iron Throne before which is a mercantile company that is pretty cutthroat. Um, they tend to provide arms and armor. Um, sometimes uh, they sort of bully the competition out uh, forcibly. Um, they've got a reputation for that sort of thing. Uh, but um, that would make sense as to what the business of Adlat is. And, and you had heard from... Uh, Carmen, that he has contacts with the Iron Throne and and such. So he may just be a, an associate or a businessman that works for them, and these are the, the mercs that work for him. Uh, there are certain aspects of these guys that does not operate like mercenaries for the Iron Throne, though, uh, in that, um, like, you just, uh, with... You're, what you've generally rolled previously and such, and just looking around the room, like for example, the sign that uh, was hanging when you came in, it carved into the sign is named La Espina de la Rosa, which is uh, the uh, the spines or the spikes of the rose, and uh, on the sign was a rose that was entwined with thorns over the lettering. And some of these guys are bearing the Black Rose tattoo that you've seen on, not all of them, mind you, but you've seen it a, a little bit throughout these guys. Um, you th think you might have walked into a connected bar. Like, just like the Lost Coast is connected for Raul's people, uh, you think that these this might be another a group that you've gone from, like, one frying pan to one fryer, more or less. But that said, the bartender comes back around the bar, um, and uh, Gabriel eventually just takes a s seat a little bit uh, further away from you guys with his back to the wall, just sort of surveying everything while he's drinking. Uh, Co's at the door. I, I didn't know what... Um, 
There he is. He's with. Uh, he's over watching Virgil, making sure that nothing bad happens to him. Uh, yeah, the, the, there is a bard on the stage that's playing sort of a background uh, tune, uh, nothing too spirited, uh, just something pleasant uh, to pass the time to. But uh, as, you know, you guys are here, it doesn't happen initially, but the guys at the uh, the table are drinking, and they're drinking copiously because, you know, you you paid for, like, however many rounds of drinks at this point so um it's it's midday at this this juncture but you feel like most of these guards or mercenaries are off duty um eventually um this guard uh that is for um house rodrigo will leave um and we'll take him to that layer there um as he goes out the uh, the front door um but most of the other folks uh, look like they're they're sitting around for a bit, just enjoying themselves. Looked like he was in here eating his lunch, and he was very surprised when the things had almost hit the fan. <laughs> it's like, it's like you know how you occasionally go by that restaurant, and you're like, you know what, I'll go in there for lunch one day. Last time I eat Italian, I'll tell you. Fair. Uh, you can go ahead and roll perception. You're good for now. Uh, the Kenku is trying to slyly have the conversation. He is not like, you know, pulling the guy in and putting his wing around his shoulder and, and just whispering to him. But at the same point in time, uh, he is like looking around and, and trying to make sure that he's not overheard. But,
Not to interrupt your conversation, but while you guys are talking, you see Arashi has some sort of conversation with the bard on stage, and he tosses the coin to the bard, the bard asks him something, and then the bard spits on the ground and then tosses the coin hard back at Arashi. Might be having Discord issues again. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's it. <clears throat> yes, I asked him to play in the old Kings and Goon, and apparently it's not on the playlist. I think I just basically did the equivalent of asking him to play something from Song of the South. <laughs> Right. Once Arashi gets to the bar, I'll look at yes, her and look at the smart music. What is it we're trying to get from these people? some lips about what? Anything they're willing to offer. They have not much to offer. So uh, I'm assuming it, eventually those sailors leave and you guys are able to, you know, take a congregation of the tables over that direction. Gabriel says, that is a good question, my friend. Uh, and uh, it appears that most all of these guards work for him. Paired daggers, yes. Yes.
conversation. He is not the one who Raul Rodrigo. Yes. Dear yeah, friends that uh, that uh, threw the coin your way for the cards that were here today and was wondering how much coin would it take if all the cards were here? Uh, I will. Ha a That'll be a deception check. Um, just because you're trying to surreptitiously get him to slip the number of guards, even though you've got a good circumstance bonus because uh, it's a reasonable question, but I still need the deception. <laughs> Critical failure is not what you're looking for. Well, I mean, he's only paying for this off shift and such. Um, generally speaking, there's about uh, six or seven per shift, about, um, not counting uh, some of the uh, just uh, roamers, I suppose, um, or zero, I, I guess. No, he never drinks. I don't think he wants to dull his senses ever. I say my compliment is to the brewer. Mm, yeah, well, I, I get shipped from across town. Well, certainly a credit to that profession, as are you. But it's a nice place to shop. Thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, the alley's around the side. Established that if you are um, over to your front with Sunken Styles, if someone was like, I follow a you'd be like, okay, that's weird, but I'm not going to like it. Mm
origin of cultism? Oh, sorry, the origin of cultism? Uh, uh, either uh, works with... Uh, just let me know what the question was again. Well, what I'm trying to figure out, I have no clue. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Sure. Re religion or occultism would be great for either of those um, as far as... Uh... Uh, one moment, I'll uh, answer that. So, uh, Virgil had gotten a look at the schematics for the daggers. Uh, they were particularly wicked, um, and could be used for bloodletting, yes. Uh, is that their dedicated purpose? Likely not, but would it be useful in the hands of a ritualist? A ritualist could likely use the daggers for that purpose. Um, is that... With a critical success, answering the question of, is that the purpose of the daggers? It's not the sole purpose of the daggers. But could it be used? Yes. Yes. But if the uh, if the person we think who had these stolen uh, is uh, as affluent as we believe them to be, I mean this might just be a tit for tat sort of situation. It's just sim simply like I don't know, I took your stuff, right? I just it was a
And this part of town is um, it's a little bit on the rougher side, I would say, but uh, it's close enough to this barracks that uh, it's safe enough. Oh, yes. No, you are right. Uh, what was the perception check for? Oh, sorry. I just forgot, like, whenever you say we do this thing, so I can just see if I actually miss it. Oh, fair. Hmm. Wait for him to leave for scouts, look for more scouts, give us enter his home, look around, find the things, and then leave. Probably just gonna go for the subjects. And I think Grail has the, uh, I think he has the right of it, but uh, at this point, with the little we know of the motivation behind this, we have to continue with investigate, um, and or, you know, uh, 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 antagonize uh, to try to get information. Or uh, what our best option is, but I think he owns this place. That's what he did. He doesn't want to be lost out there. So. Um, as this conversation is going on, um, it begins to seem to get like a dark a little bit early outside. Like clouds begin to roll in, uh, dark, like ominous ones. Uh, and uh, you guys can can hear like occasionally like the clap of uh, thunder off in the distance. Uh, it hasn't started to rain, but it probably will be raining shortly. Uh, Pete, I'm gonna hop off the chair that I'm on. I'm not thinking about changing anything. But what do we do? Do I look for that bar? Okay, should I have any ball drinks? Weapons, mercenaries, uh, things of that sort. Armor. Okay. Yes. So, um, I have reason to speak with, I believe, the owner of this establishment. I, uh, I need to sort of talk with him. Uh, is he inside here? Is this a, or is this a, an off premises residence? Um, and with the, the temple to become the main land here, um, he is also not to be going to go along with an explanation of what is going on today. All right. Uh, deception or d diplomacy for the request? 
Yes, they are luck based, so unfortunately halfling luck or whatever it is can't be used in addition. But you get the better of the two. Uh you can't use more than one now. But yeah, I got a, I have a skill. Sorry, I seven. Um he goes, uh You're asking an awful lot of questions, kid. Um listen, yeah. hey, take your dr drinks and, you know, get over there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> cool deal. All right, so um, you guys, you know, are drinking your drinks, you're finishing up, uh, you know, getting ready to take whatever next steps you are. It does begin to uh, rain lightly outside. All right, so... Uh, Sits on the steps. Okay. You may be asleep. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that I'm not here to stay in the house. 
struggling back and forth with the, the damn mute. Uh, I'm at a loss. All right. Well then. Uh... Um, I will end it here with Arashi sneaking upstairs because I'd have to change maps in order for them to uh, go over the second floor and we can pick up here next game with you guys plotting out your next action with the storm raging on outside uh, Okay. Well, uh, we'll we'll make that decision next game. 125 XP to everyone. Uh, there almost was substantially more or death, depending on circumstance. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. And it is a thousand that will be a level. So you guys are getting close there, um, and uh, you're furthering your investigation into the uh, bladesmith's dilemma so um we'll well are slim now because if they wanted to it would have been made public at some point that they were taking so it wouldn't be an effect so everybody knows they were taking but they don't know I guess my take on it was that they, they know that there was a theft, but the only individual that knew uh, was the the bladesmith and his courier. Uh, the bladesmith, if you recall, uh, was. Uh, asking for discretion regarding uh, the situation because it would be embarrassing for him. But that said, uh, the uh, Raul did not know until you informed him. So uh, no, no one outside of uh, the people that you guys have told seems to have known. Just... Well, anyway, good, good game, gentlemen.